there's lots of barriers to why people are not growing food in the city. I think the biggest barrier is the knowledge. Schools are not teaching it. It's not part of our basic education. Most people don't have yards, so that's another barrier that people have to cross is, yes, I'm interested in food, but now do I even have the space? It is human right to be able to grow food for yourself. To me, that's what aquaponics represents, this power and ability to feed yourself regardless of what your circumstances are. Stop that. Biting my fingers. Stop that. I'm just checking the water quality before I feed them. This is the ammonia here. If there's too much ammonia that's like literally waste in the water, then I won't feed them. So I do that every morning so that we know as soon as we get started that we have what we need to make the aquaponic system essentially work. So aquaponics can be defined in a lot of different ways. I like to define it as a multi-species approach to growing food and water. And what you're doing is raising fish and using that fish waste water as a food source for both microbe and plants. So the three species in an aquaponic system are fish, plants and microorganisms. Microorganisms exist everywhere on Earth, in us, on us, everywhere. We're breathing them in right now. They also exist in water. What they do is break down organic matter and turn it into something useful. In aquatic environments, they take that fish waste that would otherwise kill the fish and they turn it into nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all of that that plants are able to take up. And as soon as the plants take up all of that, the water is now clean for the fish. And it's called a aquaponic cycle. So fish produce waste, that's the ammonia that we were looking at. The microbes break down the fish waste and then produce their own waste as a byproduct, which is nitrate. And then the plants take up the nitrates through their roots. And then in return, the water is clean for the fish. So it's a multi-species approach to food production and it's also this symbiotic, reciprocal relationship between fish, plants, and microbes. So the aquaponic cycle essentially begins by feeding your fish. And that water you see coming out over there, that's water that's actually been filtered by plant roots and coming back into the fish tank. And that water leads through the pipe here. Some of the actual physical solids of the poop settles here, and then the rest of the water flows outside. So you have a constant loop, fish tanks out to grow beds, into the pumps, back to fish tank, out to grow beds. And I'll walk you outside so that you can see. Hey guys, there you go. So we call this our deep water bed. A deep water bed is just a pool of water, typically eight to 12 inches deep, where the roots are submerged in water, the rest of the plant is growing above, and these boards here are just like floating insulation. And those microbes I was telling you about, they are all over the system. Same thing you would have in soil. That's what healthy soil is. Healthy soil is just soil that's full of microbes. That's what compost is. We're just creating compost constantly, except it's liquid compost. But this is just one of the different ways you can grow plants in aquaponics. It doesn't matter how you do it, it's up to your own like creativity, which is why I love it. <laughs> and there's so many places where you can incorporate it in classrooms, in basements, in apartment buildings, in your backyard. And you never have to worry about wetting your plants. I cannot overestimate <laughs> how great that is. As long as you have a container to hold your fish <laughs> and a container to hold your plants and you are able to move your water from your fish tank to your plant roots, you have aquaponics. It's that simple and it's that basic and literally anybody can do it. When I tell people I'm a farmer, I actually don't like telling people I'm a farmer 
Because I always get the what? <laughs> How? <laughs> Where? <laughs> In Brooklyn? No. Aquaponics is often presented as this high technology, controlled environment, expensive system. But there are people around the world who are using it to address real hunger and real crisis. And it does play a role. It plays a role in New York City where accessing fresh food is still a huge barrier for the average person, especially for black and brown communities. It doesn't make sense. Low-income neighborhoods are just inundated with junk food, and then those who live in higher-income environments are able to access fresh fruits and vegetables. So it creates this horrible, vicious cycle. Like, the foundation of a healthy life is a good diet. We can't get around that. We at Oko Farms work really hard <laughs> to eliminate those barriers by actually creating access to the healthy food options. So we donate, I think it's almost 50% of what we grow, but we're the only aquaponics farmers in New York City that is not just growing food for the public, but actively engaging the public in conversation around food production. We want people to come in and be like, this is really cool, can I do it? And not just can I do it, how can I do it? I grew up in Lagos, Nigeria, uh, a city of 20 million plus people. <laughs> and I moved to New York City in 1996. I was 16 years old. In Nigeria, our diets are just rooted in fruits and vegetables. And I took that for granted. When I moved here, I was so excited by all of the junk food. <laughs> <laughs> I was excited to go to McDonald's and it wasn't until I was in college that I started to realize like, oh, actually this is not normal. So I set out wanting to be a nutrition educator and farming grew out of that. I never set out to be a farmer. I was just running into a lot of frustrations with my clients being able to afford healthy food options. And that's how my journey of growing food started. It was just putting a couple of plants on the roof, and that's it. I was just thrown into food production. I am thinning out some of these um, plants here. We have several growing in here. I want to thin them out, but before I do that, I want to create more of these blocks. That's what I'm doing here, which, believe it or not, this is not soil. People are always like, what do you mean it's not soil? It's actually not. <laughs> it's a soil substitute, and we start all of our seeds in it. This uh, actually is called water leaf, or efogure. It's a vegetable that's popular um, in Nigeria. It's a leafy green. We make um, soups with it. They're mo more like stews. <laughs> when I think about what to grow in the aquaponic system versus what to grow in soil, oftentimes I just, the first thing I think is, have I seen anybody else do it in aquaponics? If the answer is no, then I'm gonna do it. <laughs> that's, that's my criteria. <laughs> um, but we grow a wide variety of leafy greens. We do grains even. We've done rice in the past. We do sorghum, we do millet, things like okra and chili peppers. We try to do you know, a wide variety of plants. I also select vegetables that I grew up eating and I miss and I just can't find um, in supermarkets here. And even if you do find them, you go to African stores to look for them, the quality is really, really poor. So if I'm feeling that way, I'm sure that there are other immigrants who are feeling that way and wanting food that represents their culture or just like reminds them of home. And I, I, like, I like that we can, we can play that role for folks, yeah but every single thing gets started this way. And then we transfer from here to either the deep water or these, the media. This is what this section here with the bags is called media. And media just means that the plants are growing in some sort of medium. You can see here, it's the same mix we start the seeds in and it's just there to add as a structure. This for instance is edamame. Edamame is gonna get big and 
you know, a little unwieldy. It's easier to manage it in a system like this than it is to manage in the deep water bed. But the medium could be whatever you want it to be as long as it's able to hold the plant up. You put that medium, you can put it in a container like we have here, or you could just spread it in the bed. Same thing. We have the bags because it allows us a little bit of control and to move things around. And they're durable and they are inexpensive. And if there's a rip, I patch it up. <laughs> so this medium wicks up water to the plant roots. And that's how the plants stay both hydrated and also get nutrients that come from the fish. These are our koi and goldfish. We've had them for about eight years now. So the more fish you have, the more plants you need. If you have too many fish and not enough plants, then you don't have enough filtration system to clean the water for your fish. Remember, the plants are playing an essential role in keeping the water clean for the fish. That's why it's this, it's this symbiotic, reciprocal system. There are no fish. There's nothing for your microbes to consume, and then there's nothing for your plants to take up as nutrients. There are no microbes. Your fish will drown in their waste, and your plants have nothing to grow on. If there are no plants, <laughs> your fish are producing waste, then there are microbes, but there's no one to take up what the microbes are producing. So eventually, your system also collapses. So you need all living things to be working and to be healthy and thriving. We don't know enough about fish. And because we don't know enough about fish, we have fish dying. For me, doing aquaponics farming is also a way of making the argument for fish. So it goes beyond just farming fish for food. It's also about creating awareness and knowledge about these aquatic animals. They're not cuddly. <laughs> we can't hold them and pet them. But if they don't exist, we cease to exist. Without the fish in the ocean, then we also lose aquatic plants, like phytoplankton, which do about 30% of removing carbon dioxide from the environment. So for the most part, they're on the front line of an environmental crisis. Two degrees in global temperature increase is killing them. Overfishing is killing them. All of the, the pesticides and the nitrogen runoff from farming is killing them. We need to start talking about fish more. We need to start talking about water more and water use in food production. Because water is kind of a limited resource and we treat it as if it's not. And if you're someone who's growing food, you should know that incorporating aquaponics into your farming practice is also in some way a form of environmental activism. It's a form of addressing um, global crisis because your work as an aquaponics farmer is to recycle water. Unlike soil, we're using the same body of water indefinitely. With soil, you water your plants, a lot of it drains out and then gets washed out. And then you also lose a lot of it to evaporation. So because we're constantly recycling water, we use about 50 to 80% less water than soil for every square foot of plant you're growing. What's like your go-to breakfast? I like really silly breakfast. I like, like toast. You like toast? Yeah. But you should make me jollof. You've never had jollof? I just keep seeing that. Like everyone tries to Oh, them. okay. So I'll make some jollof fries this weekend and bring you some. All right. <laughs> I fell in love with aquaponics initially thinking about health and wellness. And I realized that this is bigger than just like, oh, I'm growing food and vegetables. Like this system of growing food can be used to address food security while also directly addressing water conservation, the environment, and eliminating those barriers to healthy eating options. When I have kids on the farm and I ask them, what does a farmer look like? They, all, all of them will say a guy in overalls. That's who a farmer is. So if you don't even see yourself as being a, you know, as someone who grows food, why will you grow it? So access to space, 
knowledge that is possible and then seeing people who look like you who are doing it. And in cities, where do you find all of those things in one place? It's rare. Yeah. So that's what we represent. In my language, Araoko, Oko means farm. And when you say Araoko, you're literally referring to someone who's backwards, who's uneducated, basically a farmer. But farmers are brilliant people. They're scientists, they're designers, they're engineers, they're doing all this stuff daily. I started this not knowing anything. I jumped into aquaponics, not knowing a single thing about plumbing, not knowing much about fish, and I've learned so much along the way. And I think farming actually teaches you those things. It teaches you to be creative. It teaches you to be, to be uh, flexible. It teaches you to accept failure. It teaches you persistence, just because that's exactly what nature requires. Nature requires resilience. Nature requires balance. Sometimes things are catastrophic and they fail, but nature bounces back. And in the same way, you got up the next day, and you kept going, because it is through your failures that you, you learn. I want young people, regardless of where they are in the world, to be able to look at me and be like, oh, if she can do it then, I can do it too.